Have you ever heard someone calling your name, but they're not there? Oftentimes we refer to these as mimics. I don't always utilize that language because it kind of pushes us into the idea that spirit can come in and trick us and things like that. So let's just kind of go a step beyond that. Our brains get so accustomed to hearing certain voices, your, your partner, your child, your own voice. We get so accustomed to hearing those kinds of sounds that our brain becomes used to that. So sometimes if your brain perceives some kind of anomalous sound, it will redirect the sound to sound like something that is familiar. Let's first of all, recognize that. Now, besides that, is it possible for spirit to utilize a voice to communicate to you? Well, it's very possible for spirit to do many, many things. What I have found is that spirit communication will try to use as much access points that it has in order to get through to you, meaning that it'll give you a visual, it'll give you a symbol, it'll give you a sign, it'll give you a sound of something that brings you to a sense of ease. What would happen if you are a person who is perceiving some kind of communication happening? What I would first of all challenge you to do is to not be afraid because fear is a whole adrenaline rush. Fear is going to be an engagement of our sympathetic nervous system that is going to delay your ability to think neutrally. So having worked through that process, then we ask more cognitive questions. But you have to go through all those other steps first so that way we can get clear communications.